For those of you on that side of the world, good morning. For those of you on that side of the world, good evening. But right here in the middle at Rebel Rooster Modeling, I will just wish you a good afternoon on this comfortable day, December 6th, out here in uh, Hell's Armpit at 74 degrees. Going to get a little bit chilly tonight, though, hitting the upper 30s. And I hear you laughing at me, some of you, but I'll have the last laugh at you come summer when it's 118 here and you're crying about 88. <laughs> hey, anyway, um, let's take a break from the paint uh, stuff here and talk about what airbrush should I get. And I'll start it off by telling you you should get the airbrush that suits you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you determine what airbrush is going to suit you. I've got a collection of airbrushes I've picked up over the years here. I'll talk about one I don't have anymore, but uh, that I did have, and uh, we'll talk about your subject matters, uh, you know, what you're doing, armor, cars, airplanes, uh, what scale you're doing, um, those kinds of things, and then we'll give each one a little test shot and show you what they can do, what they can't do, and um, then I'll show you a few little accessory things. Uh, to make your life a little, a little easier as an airbrush owner. Things like uh, beeswax, a uh, water separator, some cleaning gear, quick plugs, those kinds of things. Um, so, we'll, uh, we'll get going here. Put your seatbelt on. I got me a good strong cup of coffee to wind me up and we'll get going on this, right? Okay, everybody, yeah. we are pre-recorded in HD at 30 frames per second. Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about an airbrush I don't have anymore really quickly because uh, if I go through all of these, being that it's not in front of me, I'm not going to see it and I'm going to forget to tell you about it. And that's the uh, Tester's Aztec, A-Z-T-E-K brush. Um, you know, it looks like a nice setup. They, they package it in a nice box and it's got all these interchangeable tips and they tell you it's really easy to use. And it, you know, it is easy to use and it's got all these different tips you can use to get different things, different types of paint, different uh, widths of the pattern. And, you know, I had, well, I had a few of those. Um, and what I'll tell you about it is it worked nicely until it didn't work. And that was the problem I had. Internal leaks plagued the thing. Their customer support was excellent. They always either gave me a loaner while they were working on mine or... Uh, or they returned it quickly and once they even just sent me a new one. Um, so I'm going to give them that. The customer service was excellent. But, you, you know, you just don't want to use good customer service. You'd rather have something that works and you don't need to mess with customer service, you know. So um, what I liked about it was the tips were easy to change out. It was just a shoot to spray to clean them. You didn't have to really do anything but take the tip off and maybe soak it in some thinner once in a while. But uh, what I didn't like about it was that it had a unique sized hose. Like all of these here, I can use one hose for. But the Tester's Aztec had this little wimpy rubber hose with this really tiny fitting. Um, and I just didn't like it. And, you know, it busted inside. It was always leaking paint inside. It just kept breaking. And so that's why I stopped using them. Now, in fairness, I never used the metal one. I think that's the 770. But um, just the same, I mean, whether the metal, uh, the outside is metal, I don't know if they did anything with the guts on it or left the same weak um, construction on it. So enough on that. So, I mean, just my opinion, I wouldn't bother with the Tester's Aztec series. It's just not worth it. But I do have um, these arranged in an order here. Um, don't like, liked, and really liked. This is my first airbrush I ever had. It was a Badger 200. It's a uh, suction-fed airbrush, and it has been faithfully collecting dust for me over the years after I got introduced to the world of uh, gravity-fed. Now, the way this works is you hook your hose up to it here. The air comes through here. You put your paint in a bottle, and in this bottle is this tube lid. You screw it in. Then this goes in here. 
Some of them will let you use a little open air cup. Um, but, you know, it's essentially the same thing. It still has to suck the paint up into it. And what I don't like about that, if you look here, it's a pretty long trip from the bottom of this tube down here to the top up here. You don't really have any control of the paint mixture. It's, it's fixed. The only thing you can do is change your needle. When you turn this, the needle will go forward or aft to let more or less paint in and the airflow just shoots the air across and sucks the paint up through there. It's called motive flow. It just sucks it up and shoots it out. So it's always a, a fixed, it's always a fixed pressure kind of fixed, I don't know if I should say fixed volume, but you just don't get much control over it. All you can do is turn this, turn this screw in the back. And let me see if I could take the top off and let you see how that does it. You'll see up close if I can get this to focus without bumping it. You'll be able to see the uh, the needle moving forward or back. See, getting longer or shorter. So uh, that's basically all you get out of this. Now a lot of people start out with these because they're cheap and they're simple, but uh, the problem is you're kind of stuck running at the same speed for the rest of your life. You're never going to get anything more out of it than it delivers. Uh, you've got a very narrow capability envelope on it. So it's kind of like a guy who runs the 40 yard dash in 4.8 seconds. He never gets any faster, but he can get slower. Um, if you do decide to go with this, I would recommend you can see I cut my bottom of the uh, tube on an angle here. I'd recommend you do that because what's going to happen is if it goes flush on the bottom, it's not going to draw paint up as well. If you have it at an angle, it has a little more entry point into it. But um, my advice to you is if all you can afford is a suction fed airbrush, just wait it out and save till you can get a gravity fed airbrush that's double action. Now the uh, Next kind is the gravity fed, which is usually double action. I'm just gonna make a little room here and then we'll start talking about those. Next up in the order, uh, we're gonna show you my uh, master airbrush. Uh, I've got a G44 and a G48. These go in the category of what I call the cheap Chinesey. I mean, I don't know if these are made in China or if they're made in the US or what, but just the same, these are pretty cheaply produced airbrushes and a lot of people go for these for that very reason because they're cheap um, what I like about them is they're good for things that are really easy to spray and don't have much consequence like metallics you know those kinds of things but what I and you know they, they got they got a Mac valve um, I like the fine-tuned needle uh, what this does in the back is you can turn this and you know this isn't unique to master airbrushes um iwata has them on their better ones sparmax has them um even the neo series uh, i think the uh the trn i think is the trigger one has them but anyway what this does is when you turn this you can you see how far back when i turn that handle it goes all the way back let's say you don't want it to go that far back you got clumsy hands or you want to the line to stay the same size all the time what you can do is you can turn, as I turn this, you can see the needle goes further back on the trigger handle. And as I turn it towards it, it pushes it forward a little bit. So what this does is it keeps you from going too far. So that's a handy little feature. I like that they give you two types of crown caps. They give you this one with the cuts in it, as you can see. And then they give you another one that's solidly round all the way to the edge like um, like the one on this uh, Neo has. So you see the difference in the tips. Um, so you could pick if you want, if you want to get really up closer and get smaller lines, these are good caps to have, okay? Um, because it, it changes the way the air enters the, the paint flow. The Mac valve is handy, but for now, as a, if you're a beginner, just leave it wide open all the time. And when we get into the more advanced airbrushing, we'll show you how to use that thing a little more. 
So those are the nice the things I do like about these two. And really the only difference between these two is needle size and that's really about it. Otherwise, these are almost identical brushes. What I don't like about them is they're they're poorly constructed. I mean, just unscrewing this thing, I mean, you can't hear it, but it grinds as I unscrew this. And, and I've lubed it. Um, you know, it's just, it's poor construction. And the guts, I mean, this is something you really don't want in an airbrush if you ever want a decent paint, paint job. You see how the guts can wobble around? Let me try to hold this firm still so you can see what I'm talking about. See how the guts wobble around in there? All right, and if you tighten it any more than that, all right, if I tighten this all the way up then, then you can't get the needle to do anything. So I'm really not crazy about the construction on these things, but some people like to buy these because they're cheap and oh, I'll practice with them. But the problem is further is Across the board with the other airbrushes, 15 pounds of pressure, for example, 15 PSI, is going to pretty much give you the same volume of paint coming out, same, you know, it's, it's going to behave the same across them. Whether you do that with a Harder and Steenbeck or an Iwata or a Badger, 15 PSI is going to behave very similarly. It's going to be just minimum adjustment to your technique or anything with these the pressure is so it it doesn't behave anywhere near the same as it was with, would with the others and, and when i show it to you when we're spraying it'll crystallize you'll you'll see oh that's what he's talking about but um so i mean again it's cheap and oh you know you'll practice it, it's best uh, it's best just to wait until you can get something better. I mean, these, these, if you if you do a lot of them, if you do metallics, you should be okay with these. If you do enamels, you'll probably be okay with these. But if you're going to get into acrylics uh, with the larger pigments, you're going to want an airbrush that's going to behave much better. And if you're going to use lacquers, you're going to want something that's really going to maximize the capabilities and things you can do with the lacquers. So, um, yeah, if you're limited forever on what you can afford, these are it's terrible. Um, but I... I I really don't like them. Um, next, we're going to go up into the mid series. So that was the low end. That was the; those are the ones a lot of people go after right away because they're cheap. Now we're in the mid series here, and we're going to get with the uh, the neos. They're called neo by Iwata. There we go. You see, I got a new stand. I still manage to hit it, but anyway, you see, this is made for. Uh, I want to buy Neo. I don't know the whole marketing relationship, but I guess it's kind of like um, Squire by Fender Guitars, you know what I mean? Or Epiphone by Gibson, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's kind of an I want but not really. And I don't say that like, you know, oh, I am brand loyal to I want I want makes a darn good airbrush. I've tried pretty much every airbrush in the world at different trade shows and contests, and I just love the Iwata brushes. There's, don't get me wrong, they're not the only good brushes. There are, there are great brushes out there. You've got lots of choices. They're just the ones that I like the best. But I like these Neo Air brushes. These cost actually not much more at all than these uh, Master Air brushes. These are, oh, I'd say within $20 range of it, within 20 bucks of those usually. Um, there's two types, there's a TRN, and uh, this comes with a 0.35 and a 0.5 uh, millimeter nozzle. Um, and of course you can interchange those by changing what's in here and changing the needle out and everything. But uh, a lot of people really dig this trigger handle and I kind of do too, but uh, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give me the control that I like to have when I do a lot of things like 172nd scale German Motling or uh, 40 scale freehand camouflage. Now that's not to say that you can't do it because there are people out there who uh, get just remarkable results and this is all they use. This is a fine airbrush. This is really good. I do like it. I use it, I use it here and there, but I'm just really attached to the my workhorses and I'll show you those in a minute. Now, if you don't want to go the, the, big, the big handle trigger, stick them up uh, airbrush way, um, Oh, and by the way, really quick before we get there, um, the other thing that kind of I'm not crazy about is it's kind of a single, it's kind of a, 
I don't know what you would call the single dual action. All you do is pull it back and it automatically adjusts the paint and airflow. So you just squeeze it, then the air starts, and as you keep squeezing it, lets more paint out. So some people like the ease of that. Um, what I don't like about it is the, uh, the cleaning. I'm, I get messy and I spill paint and all kinds of crap. And it's really tough to get it clean up in here, up in the, uh, up in here where that, where that thing moves back and forth. Um, the orange paint in here, when you get certain thinners on it, it gets, turns your fingers orange, you know. Um, and that's really all I've got to complain about. It's, uh, you know, pretty nice to have nothing to complain about but that. What I like about it is um, you can change the cup size on it. Let me get something dropped. <laughs> um, you can change the cup size. You can unscrew this cup. And I've got mine on super tight, but you can put a smaller cup on there. And easy disassembly, just like all of them, the needle. And then you unscrew this to take the rest of it out. You shouldn't need to do it once a year. And we'll get into that when we get into advanced stuff. When we're talking about prepping plastic cleaning airbrushes. And it has the uh, needle adjuster in the back to keep you from going too far. So if I open it all the way back, you can see I can go full travel on the trigger. If I start turning it up here, you can see it's going to stop wherever I want it to, depending on how far. Watch my back hand and my thumb at the same time, see? Gives you a lot of control. So this is a good one if you if you like that uh, stick em up bang bang trigger type. If that's just not your bag, you can get the traditional double action. And this is a great uh, little airbrush to try too. This is another Neo. This is the Neo CN. Um, you can put a smaller cup or a bigger cup on it. Uh, you don't get the needle control in the back, but again, very easy disassembly. This is probably the easiest to clean airbrush in the world. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but anyway, double action. Push this down, you got air. While you're holding down, pull it back, you get paint. This is a quite capable little airbrush, um, and I'll show you that when we start doing our test runs. Um, if you're pretty hard budget limited and you want to start right now, this would be a good one to get. Uh, you wouldn't go wrong with this one either. It's just a bit more expensive than the CN. But the Neo series is pretty good. Now, now we're going to take a little leap up and we're going to get into uh, the Badger airbrushes. My two favorites are the Patriot 105 and the Extreme Patriot 105. Now there's the Patriot and then uh, the Extreme. The, the main difference between these two is the high roller trigger. Now you're not going to be able to tell because I put it on the Patriot. I put a high roller on there because I like it. It's basically, if you cut the stem in half, that's what you would have on the regular Patriot. But I love that high roller trigger. It just feels better to have it up that high. But the other difference is you get a Mac valve on the Extreme Patriot. So the Extreme Patriot is basically just a regular 105 Patriot, except you get the high roller trigger and the Mac valve. Um, what I like about these is, um, gosh, where do I start? They're simple. They have a simple open needle, which can bite you because that needle, you bump this on anything it's going to bend and you're screwed. You got to buy a new needle and then you got to be careful when you take it out because you might ruin the, uh, the cone inside when you pull it out. So this is your best friend. You got to keep this on, even when you're just changing colors because get in the habit of it. One sec, not even a second, look, a tenth of a second, a tenth of a second. Two tenths of your, sec of your life may save you a lot of pain and money. Protect that needle. But what I like about it, it's, it's, it's just such a simple airbrush to use. Um, very easy tear down. The, uh, the cup is fixed. That's kind of nice because you don't have any threads to clean later on. It's uh, pretty deep. It's a, got a deep, wide cup. You can fit a lot of paint in there. It feels good in your hand. It's just heavy enough, and it's very well balanced. And um, you've got the ability, because this is open, when you're cleaning it. Remember I was shooting paint through it? When I just do that, if I don't have enough travel and I just want to unclog something while I'm spraying or I'm really want that thing wide open when I'm cleaning, I can just go back here and pull the needle back. 
and that'll open it up really wide. Now you're gonna notice that the, the back of the needle has a little is colored blue. You can change needle sizes in these. I think you can go, um, I think you can get a 0 0.2, a 0.35, and a 0.5. Um, I wouldn't bet my big toe on those sizes, but I do know there are three different sizes. One's black, one's silver, one's blue. You know, the ball on the end. And you get a needle and a tip for each one. Inside of here is a tip, and you know, we'll show you that down the road later on in another video. But this one airbrush body can get you everything from big heavy duty primer jobs with a big spray pattern to something pretty small. Not pencil line small, but pretty darn small. Um, so these Badger airbrushes, uh, the Patriot 105s or the Extreme, these are excellent workhorses. They're better than the Neo CN, but I don't think they're on par with the uh, Iwata airbrushes. But before we get to those, you're not going to see a whole lot of these out in the States. This is a company called Sparmax, S-P-A-R-M-A-X, Sparmax, and this is an SP-35. I like this airbrush a whole lot too. Very simple. Uh, you've got the needle controller in the back, simple double action, easy takedown, fixed cup, and um, you can really dial it down and get small and up close. Again, you've got your choice of the jagged, um, the jagged crown cap, or a full, fully filled round one. You can you can unscrew them and um, and change them out. See, it just comes off. And then you can, you can change those to whether you want to get up really close or not or have a different type of pattern. We'll show you what those do later on. Um, easy to clean, easy to take apart. The hardest thing about putting this back together is getting this to line up just right. You know, because it, that needle butt's going to fit in here. Once you've found that spot, you're good to go. Um, what I don't like about the Sparmax... Uh, airbrush is getting parts in the States is difficult. You can order from Europe, but you know, it, it just, ain't nobody got time for that, right? <laughs> so that's my only complaint with this is parts availability. Now we're getting into my very favorite is the uh, Iwata airbrushes. I'll start with the workhorse. This is an Iwata HPCS. It's called, uh, I think it's called an Eclipse. Um, excellent workhorse. This is one of those, you're at the hobby shop and someone puts a gun to your head, pick an airbrush uh, for being a workhorse. I'd have to arm wrestle between a Patriot and this, but this one would win out. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the, the fine controller in the back, but the action on this thing is so smooth, you really don't need it. It's very simple assembly, fixed cup, large cup, lots of room for your paint in there. Uh, you can see how old this thing is. Look at, I've worn this thing down to the brass in the middle, in the, inside the cup. I mean, I've had this thing so long. It, it works beautifully. Um, you can get, by taking, ooh, by taking your new stand and hitting it with your arm, you can take videos that make people seasick. You could take the cap off and get up really close and get really, really fine lines with this thing by dialing the pressure down and thinning your paint a little more. Uh, put the cap back on and get a nice pattern. I can get a good probably two inches of spray pattern with this reliably all the way down to just a little bit bigger than pencil. Uh, great workhorse brush. Very durable. It feels really good in your hand. It's pretty, it's solid. It's got a good feel to it. Easy takedown. Easy to put back together, and the same feature as the uh, the others have. You can pull this back to pull that needle all the way out of the uh, cone of the nozzle when you're shooting it. So if you get a little bit of clogging or it's the paint's starting to thick up, you can pull that thing back, shoot some air through there, and, it, and then let go, and it comes right up. Comes right out. Um, and then this is another eye water. This is an HPB. Now, 
there's people like the HPBS, um, and what won out on this one with me is that, what I like about this one is this, this is a detail brush. It's a small needle brush, I believe it's a point two. Yeah, it's a point two, uh, which means it's made for fine work. But what I like about it is that you can get a little wider a pattern. The B, the HPBS, and you know, the Badger Sotar, um, some of those, um, one of those uh, pro cons, I think some of those other detail brushes. That's their niche. They're made just for detail, and you can't get much bigger than detail work. What I like about this one is I can get that fine detail work, especially if I take that cap off. I can really get in there, and um, I can do one seventy second scale freehand camouflage with this with the combination of low pressure, no cap, and thinned out paint. And it will look good. It won't look like there's all kinds of overspray, no dotting everywhere. You can do that with this. It takes practice, but you can do it. Um, but if I want to go wider and get a bigger pattern, I can back up and I can shoot it wide open and I can get a good pattern. I'm talking about, oh, an inch, an inch and a quarter, which for a detail brush is really good. You do have the fine needle uh, adjustment in the back. You can pull it back to clean it on the fly, like uh, we talked about before. The only thing is, you got a smaller cup on that, so you're not going to put a lot of paint in there. But basically, when you think about it, it's made to be a detail brush. You're not going to want a whole lot of paint in here anyway. But I was kind enough to think about it and trunicate the, uh, the top so the paint doesn't go spilling out right away. It has to kind of go up the wrong direction and fall back into the cup before it can spill out. So... That's a breakdown on the brushes, basically. So you're going from, um, you know, I this word gets tossed around so much in the modeling world and people usually won't explain why, but I'm just gonna say. You get your kind of beginner garbage, and really, I just, I wouldn't do this, guys, really. Um, it's just, you'll see why, it's just not worth it. Well, then you got your cheap stuff. Oh, you can polish the needles to make it work better, you can, you know, you can do all kinds of things with the threading, but you know, who wants to buy an airbrush and then have to put all this extra work and money and conversion into it and to make it just decent. It's kind of like buying that 132nd scale Ravel Corsair and then buying, you know, for, you know, 30 bucks and then spending 200 bucks on aftermarket parts to make it nice when you could have just bought a Tamiya Corsair for 179, uh, you know, at 132nd scale and, and saved yourself all the headache. So... But what I do use these on occasion for metallics, if I've got some dirty airbrushes I don't feel like cleaning beforehand, I'll just use these really quick. Um, so that's where those go. Then next up, you're gonna be getting into um, the Entry Series Good Airbrushes. And that's the Neo Series by Iwata. The TRN with the uh, trigger and the CN which is simple double action. Then you get into your Badger Patriots. Very good workhorse brushes. I would recommend these. Actually, I'd recommend the Neos too. I, I, I would have no trouble sending someone to one of those for a first airbrush either. Get your sea legs on those, then maybe move up to a Badger uh, Patriot. Or even better yet, work your way, uh, uh, if you can make the jump to an Iwata HPCS um, Eclipse. And then when you're really getting brave and wanting to try more things, you can go to the uh, Iwata HPB. Um, and if you want super duper detail stuff, I mean like small lines, small dots, super detailing, Badger Sotar is a good one to get. There's, there's a bunch of them out there. And if you find one of these Sparmax SP35 sitting around, that's a pretty darn good airbrush too. But like I said, parts are the issue with that one so there's a quick breakdown on the uh the airbrush types and we'll talk about we're gonna do well before we talk we're just gonna do some quick shooting and we'll probably talk while we shoot so see you again in just a little bit okay so the first one we're gonna try out is gonna be the uh the gravity fed airbrush this is a badger 200 200 nh I took some uh, Tamiya XF61, which is a good, that's a good color to be, you know, just doing general stuff with. It's a dark green, it's gonna show up on everything. And I just kind of eyeball thinned it. 
um, to, uh, I just kind of eyeball thinned it towards the right consistency. Uh, I've got the paint in the cup, but things screwed on. We're gonna put this together, push it in there pretty good so it doesn't drop off on you. Now watch down here, you're gonna see the paint. I've got it set at 15 PSI, which for all my other airbrushing always works well, but as you can see, nothing's happening. So there's my first problem. I've got to get up now, and I've got to crank the pressure up higher to get enough airflow to draw the paint up the straw. And you're going to see it start coming up there. You're going to see it trying to anyway. See, it's having a hard time. So that sometimes happens when your paint's a little low and even though it's going up the straw, it's still something to do with the volume of it. It likes to have enough pushing it upwards. So let's put a little more in there. And uh, we'll see about getting it, um, getting it in. And as you can see, it's a, uh, it's an adventure. Come on. All right, let's try this. Let's try 25 pounds. And see how that does. There's still nothing happening. So you see already the road to disappointment. All right, let me push pause. I'm gonna have to mix some more paint. Maybe if I put it higher, they'll have enough pushing down on it to help it out. And it seems like anything under 20 and it won't draw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm um, gonna try this again. Now you're gonna see as I, the needle is fully closed right now, as I rotate this and draw the needle back, that's going to allow paint to exit through with the air and it's gonna be drawn up through the tube. So basically all that's regulating your paint is how far back your needle is, which is kind of like what you're doing when you're pulling the trigger back on the double action, except you get more control with the double action than you do with this because you can vary it as you work. Whereas with this, every time you want to change it, you don't just move your finger a little bit. You got to turn it off, turn the needle or hold it down with one hand to hold the air down while you turn the needle on the back. Very very wonky to do work on the fly. Now, um, what I've got is, you know, I told you about how I feel about paper towels and all that stuff, but, and spoons, but I mean, this is just a, we're not testing anything really except patterns on the airbrush. So I'm just gonna spray paper towel and you can see up here, I put a little pencil line and I'm gonna get up close and we're gonna see how close we can get to that pencil line with these. So I'm going to, uh, Hold this down and watch that straw. You're going to see the paint start coming up as I open the needle. You're going to see it. I think you will. There it is. See? Now he's going to kind of open the needle a little more to let more paint out until it starts doing something for us. So there you see how it works. It's kind of a You get a wider pattern by opening the, the needle more. And you can get up close. You can get a smaller line by turning that needle small, tighter. You see each time I'm getting a smaller line by getting closer to it. But don't forget, I'm running, I'm running over right around 20, what am I shooting here, 24 pounds just to get paint through this thing. So you're you're gonna get spider, if this was plastic, you'd probably have spider webbing and all kinds of stuff going on. And I'm gonna shoot it across now, and you're gonna see as I go across and open the needle, the, needle, the line's gonna get wider. Just by changing it. Let me turn this on and get that out. Hang on, it's gonna be loud, cover your ears. So 
you can see this really isn't the easiest thing in the world to do unless you're just maybe shooting something that you're never going to change the adjustment on like a primer or a metallic but then again you're limited everything you got to do is can be kind of a pain with this so and now the fun part is cleaning it not only do i get to clean all this stuff but now i got to find a way to get all the paint out of the inside of the straw and everything and it's going to be up it's going to be up in the lid it, it's just no fun and one final thing is what let's say you decided to go with a harder and steam back okay and then you're like later on you know uh parts interchange is too difficult with this you know whatever the deal is you decide to go with an iwata or a badger or you know somebody else's a ma even a master airbrush they all use the same size hose so you can go brand to brand and you'll never have a problem interchanging hoses you see how this has kind of its own little size there so now if you decide to step up an airbrush now you got to buy another hose too so not that hoses are terribly expensive, but it's just another darn thing you got to buy. You know what I mean? So, like I said, these were good for the day, but there's so much better stuff out there. Why not go ahead and get something a little better? One more little joy, everybody. When you take the bottle off and uh, you've relieved the air and the airbrush, and you've pulled it out, you get this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the gift that just keeps on giving that keeps on giving the whole year. I'm just going to shoot these in no particular order. I'm shooting these all at 15 PSI. We're going to start out with the uh, Master Airbrush G48. Now I'm going to open up the needle full wide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the needle down. Show you kind of needle we can get here. And as you can see, it kind of, it'll spray you a good line for a while, but after a while, it just starts spotting and getting inconsistent until you open the needle up again. But then even then, it should have meaning you're not getting a consistent line unless you keep opening the needle up. And as soon as you stop doing that, it just kind of, you know, it just kind of doesn't behave itself that well. Um, but you can see, so far, we've got a pretty good uh, small line variance. Just to give you an idea, I'll draw a pencil line on each one so you can see where we're starting from. So you can see it's uh, it's not terrible. It certainly isn't terrible, but and it widens up pretty good. But and this isn't really a big deal to you right now, especially if you're doing your paints right. But you can kind of see where it kind of bows up in here, and then again here in the pattern. Instead of giving you a straight line across like it did on the top. So you get kind of those, some of those weird things going on. But you can see where the line starts to kind of puts out in places until I start rewidening and reopening the needle again. What you want to see is a consistent line all the way across without any breaks of having to uh, adjust the needle while you're painting. Um, it's not terrible. And again, remember, this is on paper. I mean, you can see even on the paper, if you look very closely, where it's kind of splatter a little bit in here on the right side, right there. You can imagine what that's going to do on your plastic. So it kind of, you know, it's it's one of those things where you don't always believe your eyes what you're seeing. It's not always going to tell you the truth. If this was uh, painting a model, you'd have a pretty good mess going there. So I'm going to just change airbrushes and we're going to do the uh, G44. Master okay. airbrush G44. This is the bigger of the two.
Okay, there's the G44. Take a look over here at it. You can see you don't get the smallest lines in the world. Uh, definitely about six or seven pencil lines thick at the thinnest. Take note again, you see there's a lot of sloppy pattern there. There's some spider web there on that heaviest dot over there by that thing that looks like a seven. And that first dot has a lot of splattering. So you see this isn't really the best brush for getting up close and personal with things there. But for a general uh, general purpose brush, maybe your, uh, your metallics, your primers, it's gonna be okay. But uh, not very versatile. And again, when I get to cleaning this thing, it's gonna be kind of a pain. And I can feel, like I said, when I move the, uh, when I move the handle up, or not the handle, but the trigger, and I push it down for the air and roll it back, I can feel it moving around inside the brush. And you can even see over here, I'm trying to spray the X's. There's just some times where it didn't want to kick in till later, and then it wanted to cut out early, and it's just a little bit too unpredictable for me. But like I said, if you're just going to run it wide, you know, open at the same volume and the same pattern all the time for something like a primer or a metallic coat, that, it might do the job for you. But for colors, especially when you're getting down into 148 stuff and, you know, 72nd or, you know, God help you, 1144th, it's just not the brush for I'm you. Cleaning it. There's more thing I'm going to show you. I don't know how well it's going to catch this, but you're going to see the pattern of the paint or the paint thinner with a little bit of paint left in it. Instead of going off in a straight line, let me get this lined up, like it should over here. It's gonna break off to the left a little bit. You're gonna see it as it sprays, okay? Oh, so catch it. You see that? That's a sign of two things. Either you got a bent needle or a crappy airbrush. Um, and in this case, the needle's straight. So I think that kind of, and also I want to show you something else while we got you here. You might, and this will be, oh gosh, this is going to be something that's really going to screw the pooch on you. Uh, the pulsating that you're going to see, you're going to see in this pattern, just keep it, let it keep running and you're going to see it start pulse there. You see that little bit of pulsating, that little bit of hesitation there? I don't know if you can hear or see it, but an interruption in the flow, that is gonna screw you every time. So that's another thing that I don't like about these. I don't know what's causing it, but it's something that these master airbrushes do. Um, so let me switch again, and uh, next we're gonna be doing the Neo TRN, uh, the Neo CN, and the uh, Spar Max 35. Neo TRN, this is our, uh, our trigger stick em up bad guy uh, airbrush. Uh, you're going to see first, nothing's going to come out but air. And then as I continue to pull it back, the paint's going to come out. It takes a little bit of a delicate hand to get this, to get the most out of it, but I'm going to get this right above the pencil line here. And uh, I'm going to take the cap off and get underneath it now. And you can see it's giving me consistency. It's not quitting on me. It's just spraying it nice and steady and smooth. I'm going to put the cap back on. We'll see how wide we can get it now. Oops, I got to let the needle open a little bit, huh? How about that? There, see? See why a lot of people like this one for the primers and the main coats. And you 132nd folks are going to love that thing too, see? So uh, looking at it, um, we'll zoom in a little bit here. There's your pencil line there in the middle. Speaking of pencil, here you go. There's the pencil line we started with. We've got a pretty good consistent uh, line with the cap on. If you're into mottling or faded camouflage, Taking the crown cap off and getting up close, getting there. Now again, you know, you're gonna have to practice before you can do that on the model because this paper's helping us. 
But when we opened it, and look at this, all the drifting around, it didn't sputter on me, didn't give me any trouble. And when I needed a, needed a nice wide pattern, look at that. So this is a really good brush if, uh, if you like that trigger style thing. So like I said, I just find the cleaning a little bit more difficult than I like to. And it, the trigger just doesn't, you know, just the way my finger works, um, it seems to start too suddenly for me. But I'm sure with proper greasing on the guts on it and a little practice with your finger, um, you'll get you'll get uh, pretty comfortable with it pretty quickly, and you're gonna and you'd like Okey it. Okey dokey, smokey. Here we go. Neo CN. Same 15 psi. Same paint. So you can see it's not the thinnest line in the world, but if I take this cap off now and I get close. I can do a lot more with it. There we go. Now let's see how wide I can get with it. Alright, get this cap back on there. Alright, now let's see how wide I can get it. Pretty capable little guy, huh? Take a look at it. First, let me throw a little cleaner in here so we don't uh, screw the pooch and let it let it dry out on us. And uh, in disclosure, that's I didn't really clean that thing that well either. So, but anyway, you can see over here. Let me zoom in nicely. You can see there's our pencil line. There's our neo line up close and personal. You can see it gives me a little hiccup in here. I don't know, it might have been me. I was kind of stepping on the hose. <laughs> but anyway, gets a nice wide pattern when you need it too. Not a bad little airbrush by any stretch at all. Um, let's take a look at the Badger 105. Okay, here we the Badger 105. Now, just one more reminder, everybody. Oops. Don't bump your camera stands. Um, hey, don't forget to use this cap all the time. That needle's exposed. You're in for a world of heartache if you don't get in the habit of protecting that needle, okay? Um, so, I'm using it's the regular old Badger 105 Patriot. I've got a Super as well, but like I said, um, the difference is the trigger, which I put on this one anyway, and the Mac valve. Otherwise, the results are very similar. Um, so, let's just kind of get this. Oh, you know what? I was cleaning. Let me turn this pressure back down to something more believable. Um, just a second. Oh, gosh. There we go. All right. Start with our pencil needle. Very consistent. Now, let's widen it as we go. There we go. Is it consistent? Does it behave itself? Yes, it does. Let's take a look at that one with my cap on, right? Right. All right, let me uh, put a little cleaner in here so it doesn't dry up on me while we're doing anything. Um, now, this one. Let's take a look and zoom in. Again, I'm going to tell you again and again and again until, until I'm blue in the face and you're blue in the ears of hearing it. We're using paper. It's helping us, okay? You're not going to be able to do this off the bat on your plastic. It's going to take practice. You're going to have to change your air pressure. You're going to have to change your dilution of the, of the paint. Uh, you might even have to change your paint type. But anyway, there's our pencil line. You can see it's we can get it pretty close and get it pretty small, not pencil small, but pretty close. We wandered all over the place and it kept good consistent line with no sputtering. We widened it out, it hit us good. It fanned out nicely on the pattern. So it's a fine airbrush. Um, so that's what I would call your first workhorse. If you didn't have the scratch for a uh, Iwata HP uh, CS, I would go with a Badger Patriot. Um, so there's my first one that I would recommend. Now, let's talk about the Sparmax X SP35. Here is our Sparmax SP35, another good workhorse airbrush. You can even kind of, 
but you can even see it kind of wanders towards a detail brush. Um, let's see how this one goes. I've got the cap on. And let's widen it out. So you can see it doesn't get as wide as the others do. But it sure can get nice and tight. Let's see how close we can get of a line here. And uh, that's looking pretty darn good too. So another good airbrush. Like I said, it's it, it's you can call it a workhorse, but it kind of strays more towards a detail brush than a true workhorse. It's um, it's a really good one. I really do like it. We'll zoom in here, take a look at it. Yeah, I, I haven't cleaned it in a little while, so it did a little bit of I don't want to say sputtering, but you know it had a little bit of difficulty over here in that area and a little bit here but you can see once it started getting its paint moving and the thinner loosened up the other stuff it, it held right up there doesn't get quite as wide as as the others do particularly the uh the trn1 but uh you know like i said this this isn't made to be a big wide pattern brush this is they call it i guess a general purpose but i i think it's a little more more towards right between well, if detail was a one and, you know, broad spectrum general airbrush was a five, I'd put this right around a uh, two and a half. So it's really more towards finer work than it is for big broadcast work. But if you can get your hands on this one, I would recommend it, but I would give it a second thought solely for the purpose that it's tough to get parts for it in the U.S., uh, those of you out there in the UK, um, I'm sure you guys love this thing because that's where all the parts seem to be coming from. But uh, this is a darn good airbrush to get as well. So this is another one I would recommend. We're up to the uh, Iwata HPCS um, Eclipse. And 15 PSI again. Let's see what we got. Oh, I got to give us a pencil line. Hey, who wants to see me draw two pencil lines? You do? You lucky bastards, you get to see me draw a pencil line. Look at that. Now, how many people today do you know that got to see me do that, huh? How about it? Anyway, let's get started here. All right, I got it. And now I'm going to widen it up. Now I'm going to take the crown cap off and see how close I can get with a good pencil line here. So you can see I can draw all day long with that thing. Look at that, not a single sputter. And that, um, that is something I wasn't able to get out of the Harder and Steenbeck at the, uh, at the two times I tried that out. I tried it out at uh, IPS Nats when it was in Phoenix, and then uh, somebody else was doing a little road show of their own, and they had their harder and steam back with them. And I mean, it was a fine airbrush. Um, trigger felt a little different, but I guess everybody says once you get used to that, you really get a good feel for it, and they love the way it rolls back. But um, my big thing was I couldn't get it to stay as consistent wandering around for as long in the fine um, in the fine spectrum as I could with the Iwata. So here's our pencil line. And here we are from up close and fine all the way to wide open. And again, I told you for every piece of paper we sprayed, and I'm just gonna tell you once more, if you listen once more, remember the paper's helping us. When we get to advanced stuff, we'll talk to you about how to get those super fine lines and everything. So all we've got left is the HPB. Give me one second to do a precursory cleaning and I'll set this one up with the HPB. By Iwata. Iwata HPB, point two needle. And uh, we'll start spraying this one now. Cap on. Now 
you can see what I mean by the uh, by the detail capabilities of this thing. Even even with the cap on, we're getting a fine line. Let's see what it looks like without it now. Stepping on the hose like a big doof, but anyway, uh, sorry about that. And let's open it up wide. You'll see what I mean by it. Not really. That's wide open. See. Well, let me open the back a little bit more. There we go. Now we're talking. So there you go. But uh, let me just hit this really quick, and then we'll talk for just a second. All right. You can sit there a minute now. All right. Now let's take a look at here. We'll zoom on in here. There's our pencil line right here. And you can see we get a pencil line out of it, see? Up close. Yes, paper's helping us, but you can do it on the model. If you can do it on the paper, you can do it on the model. You just gotta do some 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 fudging and some working to make your formula right for it. But wanders around nicely, opens up pretty good. That's about an inch wide pattern here. And um, it's, again, if you've got the BS, the HP BS, you wouldn't get as wide down here. It'd probably peak out about here-ish because it's a pure detail brush. That's why I like the capability of this one. I can do 1 1 44th all the way up to 1 uh, 48th with this one. 1 48th is going to take a little longer, but it can certainly be done. So... Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take all these papers apart and we're going to stack them up and we're going to look at them and do a side by side. Let's just wander around and take a quick look at these and then we'll talk about each paper and how it went. Okay, so let's look at each one individually. Pick a card, any card, right? Let's pick the uh, the first card here. The Master Airbrush G44. Not a terrible airbrush, but not a good airbrush either. Um, but, you know, both of the Master Airbrushes have features that, had they worked really properly, or didn't take so much work to get to work correctly, would benefit. Um, you can see on the pencil line, we're not getting anywhere near a pencil line on it. It fans out consistently when you want it to. Um, but we did get where it just decided when it was going to let paint out and when it didn't. We also saw when we went to clean it how the paint shot off to the left. And that's not because the needle was crooked, that's because the guts were crooked. And I felt them moving around when I was pulling the trigger back. So, uh, you know, and, and it comes to, you know, like we said earlier, well, I'll just buy this one to learn how to airbrush. But what you're learning is bad habits now because you're having to adjust for the shortcomings in that airbrush. It's kind of like when you have a, uh, a certain, let's say you got some shoulder muscles that you got trouble with it's going to start messing with your biceps because your biceps are going to be doing things uh differently and at odd angles to make up for the weakness of your shoulder then the next thing you got an arm problem you know what i mean so you don't want to no kentucky windage with your airbrushes okay um now the master airbrush g48 that was the smaller of the two with the finer needle and the smaller cup a little better i mean it tried it tried to give us nice lines but you know, inconsistency of the spray. And it uh, it wandered around pretty good, but you can see where it started giving us that sputtering and the inconsistent paint flow. Maybe you can fix that with uh, dressing, the, you know, polishing that needle up really good or doing something weird with the guts. But I, like I said, I, just, I want an airbrush that I don't have to tune as soon as I buy it. You know what I mean? Something that's gonna be good. Now we're getting into some better stuff. We're, we're getting into the Neo TRN. You're not going to get really a good pencil line from it, but it's not made for that. And in fairness, um, not only not in fairness necessary, but just in disclosure, 
I have a 0.5 needle in this one because I like to shoot primers with this one. So, um, you know, you might be able to get fine. In fact, I, I'm confident that you could, if you put the 0.35 needle in there, get finer lines than that. But I like to use it for shooting my primers pretty much. Uh, so I put a 0.5 needle in there. But you can see there is no interruption of, pet, of, of spray. It wanders beautifully. And boy, when you open that sucker up, look at that. Um, so that's a good airbrush to have. Uh, but like I said, the the cleaning is a little more difficult and I like it to be, uh, if you're a clean worker and you don't spill paint all over it, um, you're not going to have a problem with it. But I, I get a little careless and I have that problem. So, you know, I have it and I use it periodically, uh, but it is definitely something to look into. The Neo CN, now you're moving a little bit step up. Um, you're getting a little finer of a line. There's your pencil and there's this. It wanders nicely, it spreads out nicely. It opens up, you know, it, it's pretty wide. It looks better on the camera, but this is kind of a hazy wide and I'd say you're not gonna get any wider than maybe, this would be about three passes, not one or two, whatever it looks like. But I wouldn't call it a workhorse airbrush that I would keep a very long time for a lot of things, but definitely a good beginner's airbrush if you're on a budget. The transition to a good airbrush will be easy after having this one. Now we're stepping up a little bit into the uh, the good ones. Badger 105 Patriot. Um, and again, we, we, there's a super out there or an extreme, whatever they call it. Uh, really, the only difference is the Mac valve and the tall trigger. Otherwise, I found the, the performance similar. Um, the downside of this is the exposed tip. Um, you're going to bend a needle if you're not careful, especially if you try to do detail work. But there's our pencil line. It does pretty good. You know, it's not going to get you as fine a line for the uh, equivalent brush as, you know, the HPCS um, by Awada. I would consider the Badger, a lot of people consider the Badger 105 Patriot and the uh, Iwata HPCS a side by side comparison. Um, they're in similar price ranges. Uh, similar needle sizes, those kinds of things. So they consider them a side by side, but I really do think that the Iwata beats it. Um, and this is where it does it is you'll see it gets a better fine line. It wanders nicely, it fans out consistently and it opens up pretty good when you need it to. A good beginner's airbrush, a pretty good workhorse airbrush. The Sparmax SP35, kind of the wild card. I just tested it because I had it. Um, I do like it. I just don't like the parts availability issue. Wanders nicely, gets you a pretty good line when you get up close. You can see, not quite pencil, but pretty darn good. Doesn't open up terribly wide, but not what it's made for. A uh, good workhorse airbrush. A, if you can get your hands on it, and B, if you can deal with the parts availability problem, which is going to be an issue sooner or later if you airbrush much. It's not that you're going to buy an airbrush and never have to do anything with it, okay? Um, now we're getting into the big leagues. Uh, Iwata's HPCS. You can see our pencil line right here. And this is where the, um, the Badger 105 loses to it, you see? It tries to get a fine line, but it just really can't do it without a lot of overspray. And the Iwata can do it nice. The HPCS can do it nicely. It's not quite a pencil line, but it's pretty darn close. Wanders consistently and beautifully, widens out nicely. A very good workhorse airbrush, a very good uh, beginner's airbrush. This would be one of, this would be what I would consider a lifetime airbrush. The, I'm gonna buy it and keep it forever leagues. Very good one. HPB, for those of you who wanna get into the detailed work. Here's our pencil line right here. And you can see it does it. Um, it wanders consistently and beautifully. It fans out nicely. And it opens up to just about an inch. It's a bit of a stretch to go into 48th scale with it. I mean, you can do it. It'll take a while uh, to paint a whole 48th airplane like a P-47 or, you know, something good size like that. 
a 30 second scale I wouldn't I, I can I don't say out of the question because there's always somebody who has that kind of patience I don't I wouldn't do 30 second scale stuff with this thing except for detailing and stuff like that but a not really a workhorse but definitely a very good airbrush um, for a beginner why not why not get the good habits early um, so there you are with those now what can they do with a model um, I'll start with uh, my my, my semi-famous uh, 12-hour P47 here. Um, this is just a Revell P47. Taping, assembling, painting, everything. This was a quickie. It only took me 12 hours. Um, so you're going to see mistakes and crap like that. But that's not what we're focusing on. What we're trying to look at is what did the airbrush do for me? I did the whole thing with the HPCS. So you can see you can get nice cannon smoking on it. Um, a little bit. This is going to be pretty tough with these intense lights, but if you can see, if you can see the post shading on the lines here, let me zoom out just a little bit. That may help. The post shading on the lines is pretty, is pretty well handled. The um, right up here, where the gray meets the green, was freehand. All along the back here. This was all freehand. Down here, freehand with the cap on, believe it or not. So you can get even tighter if you take that cap off. Again, freehand with the cap on. You can get tighter if you take the cap off. So it's it's really good for freehand 148th camouflage. Um, this um, Focke Wolf 190. Also done with an HPCS, freehand camouflage right there. Um, the line across here, freehand with an HPCS. So you can see that it can do quite a bit. Now where the HPB really shines, this is a 172nd scale um, BF-109 Tamiya kit. I gotta get something here. Hang on just a second while I fudge around a little bit. There we go, okay. This is a 172nd scale BF-109 by Tamiya. Nothing was masked on this. This was all done freehand with an HPB, including the mottling on the side. I hope this is focusing well. Now to give you an idea of, of the size we're dealing with, here's a pinhead. So you can see, oh, please focus for old Terry. You can see what you can do. And again, this whole camouflage job was done freehand with the HPB. The mottling, everything. Nothing was masked. Neither the blue to gray transition on the line here. All done freehand, including the... Uh, the bottom side post shading. So that's why I love those Iwata brushes. Uh, you buy two airbrushes in your whole life, an HPB and an HPCS, and you're good for life from, from 170 second freehand all the way up to uh, 130 second scale stuff. Um, so what airbrush should you get? You've got my recommendations. Number one, well, I'll tell you that a little bit more in a second. Um, I'm just going to do a little airbrush cleaning here, fire up another coffee, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more. I'll show you some accessories too. I'll lay them out right now for you to see, okay? And that's going to be uh, beeswax, a uh, moisture trap if you don't have one on your compressor yet, quick change connectors, a cleaning tool. And you got to use this carefully. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, another cleaning tool. And these are actually for weathering, but we can use those for cleaning the airbrush. So I'll take a break and I will see you shortly. Okay. A few of the accessories I like to use. Um, once uh, we get to it, 
I'll do a little thing on uh, care and cleaning for your airbrush. These are good to get. These are sold as weathering uh, devices, but they're good for getting down into the. Uh, they're good for getting down into the tips of the airbrush, and because they're pretty soft, they're not going to damage it. It's just soft plastic and uh, poly, no fibers to mess up. Sounds like a fire alarm out there. Nope, it's just a truck backing up. Uh, and similar things, just a little bigger. There for I use those for the bigger parts uh, to clean, like the cones. Because uh, you know they sell these these tools here. Try to get if you can get ones with plastic shafts, that's all right. But definitely get the ones with the poly fibers, like the or the poly brushes like this, not the. Uh, metal brushes that's gonna the metal brush is gonna chew your airbrush up so try to get the one with the soft black poly on the brushes some people use these things too for uh pushing through the uh the back end of it to the front to try to get bigger things out use these with caution these can scratch up the inside of your airbrush too i wouldn't get these as a beginner i'd wait till i was really good at cleaning my airbrush and had an idea what i was doing most of them will come with the tools, but you're going to want to try to get these. Don't go using uh, your gator grips. You're going to end up over tightening something sooner or later. Um, and this one, this is for the very nozzle tip. You should probably use this maybe once a year, the tiny one. If you're using this every time you airbrush or even monthly, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're not doing something right. You're either not fitting your paints right or you're uh, using crummy paint something's wrong um lube or this i'm sure there's other people who use other stuff but chemically um i'm just not that uh interested in getting to know you know what white lithium is going to do or some other lubricant i just use this stuff you don't need more than a drop a uh, drop per cleaning anyway if you're doing things right the beeswax i like to use beeswax in the uh, threadings um up here when I'm reassembling, uh, particularly this part of it where there's an air seal. Um, what I do is I, and I'll show you this again at the care video, I push it in there and I just give it a quick melt and it seals the threads really nicely. I like, it's a hell of a lot easier to use than the PFTE tape and it gives you a good seal. It doesn't, uh, you know, if it wears out, who cares, put more on. Um, I have found that the cleaners don't attack it very much. So I like to use the beeswax a lot for that. Um, this is a cleaning tool. Another thing you might get your hands on. I think Iwata sells one for a million thousand dollars, but you can get these on um, Cramazon pretty cheap. Now I can't show it to you because I don't think the camera's going to capture it, but it's not round looking at it this way. It's actually chopped off and it acts as a script, as a, uh, a scraper when you rotate it um, and it's good for cleaning your your tips but you really got to be careful because you're gonna you can hurt your, your airbrush using it wrong and this is one of the uh, remember I told you if you don't have a moisture trap on your compressor that you can get one in line for your airbrush now let me do something really quickly here to show you something I'll show you something to show you something um, the way it works is you're going to put it, you're going to screw it onto your airbrush like this, okay? You can't get it wrong, it's only going to fit in one direction. And then you get the hose, and you put the hose in the bottom of it here. And then, as water forms, it's going to get trapped in here. And then you just push this little thing down like your bike tire. Your bike, just like your bike tire. You just kind of give that a push with your thumbnail while you're holding it upright. And out comes the water. I don't like it because look at this. Look how tall it makes your stem. So when you're trying to get into a wing here, you can't do it because it's in the way. So I like to use the one that comes on the compressor. Now, you're going to hear hissing, and that's going to bring me to my next thing, which is probably my favorite of all of these. And that's the, uh, the quick changes. These uh, quick disconnects. 
Now you saw how we had to unscrew the airbrush and screw it on to the hose, you know. What I like about these is I can go from airbrush to airbrush in a second. Look, I just pop it on, spray, do my thing, and then I just click it off, get my next airbrush, pop it on. Don't like it, go to another airbrush. And this is great for when you're doing uh, your lacquers and you want to hit it with the Mr. Leveling Thinner at the end of it. Remember that little dusting trick I showed you? Uh, just keep one with a little bit of Mr. Leveling Thinner in there, park your other airbrush, uh, pop the hose off, put the other one on, and hit it really quick. And the way they work is uh, this part is going to screw on right here, okay? And then this one, you pull this back, pull that sheath back, and you push it in there. And then you let go. The only problem you're going to have with these, well, there's two problems you're going to have with them. Uh, depending on who you buy them from, sometimes you'll get a manufacturer where they don't where this won't agree with this one. So you like might you might buy in a, uh, a cuff from a WADA that comes with its own uh, mail in and they work beautifully. Then you go to, you buy some from say Master Airbrush and then it won't mate. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. But the thing that happens all the time is you're gonna lose your washers. They tend to come out of here pretty easily. Um, you'll know that because you're losing air when you put it on or your or your compressors cutting on and off all the time So uh, the washer is the big thing that you that you're gonna face the most problem with and it's it's just gonna happen Because you're gonna get in a hurry with something or you're not gonna be paying attention and the washer is gonna be gone And then you know, but they do sell those washers in packs of five if you do get in that mess so those are the uh, the little things that are gonna make your life easier when you own an airbrush Especially, excuse me, um, I am down. My blood's turning red and not brown from my coffee anymore. I better do something. If I was to pick one of these accessories, um, it'd probably be this thing. I love these quick disconnects. These are the best. Uh, and of course, cleaning gear is a necessity. Option, second thing, I love the beeswax. It really makes your life easier. Um, so anyway, let me click you off here um, and we'll wrap up. Okay, so I hope that all helped you out. Uh, the big thing I want you to know is, uh, and I really want you to put that in your gorge for later. We were shooting paper, okay? So um, that helped everything look better. It's not going to be that easy to get those small lines and everything. Um, I mean, if you can do it on paper, you can do it on plastic. It's just going to take a little bit of, you know, fudging around with the... Uh, air pressure and the thinning ratio that kind of stuff but what I really wanted you to see is um, you know the change was gradual going from one brush to the other but where you really see the difference is when you go from the very beginning to the very end and you cut out the middle and this is where you can really see it from smallest line to biggest and everything in between. Sputters, everything. See, the change was gradual because we were going from, you know, you know, crummy to fair to pretty good to good to really good to excellent. And it's kind of like, you know, the old frog in the pot. You know, you bring it up a degree a day and, you know, the frog never knows until it's dead, right? Um, but when you take that very first really crummy airbrush and then you go to the really good airbrushes where, and you just hold those and you take out the middles where you really see the big difference. So, um, you know, I hope I helped you with that. Um, excuse me. Um, the other thing is, don't go buy an airbrush because your favorite uh, model builder uh, uses it or says to do it. Um, I think back to about, you know, oh gee, what, 150, 200 years ago when I was 15 years old and I had hair and I was a metal head and I tried it. I bought this, this Iron Maiden t-shirt. It was the uh, from the Killers album and it just looked cool. So I was like, yeah, I might as well, if I got the t-shirt, I might as well listen to the music too. So I tried it out, bought their Killers album, plugged it in. Man, I went ape shit. It was just, I was off the wall for Iron Maiden since then and I still am to this, to this very second. Um, but anyway... Um, I wanted to be a guitar player suddenly, right? So um, I 
you know, through the years I looked at what, you know, when I finally cut enough grass and, you know, did enough work to save up money for, uh, for my first real, you know, quotes, real guitar. Um, I was like, ooh, you know, looked at what everybody was buying and the big thing of the day was uh, the King V uh, and the, um, especially the Gibson Flying V. And I was like, oh, I want to buy that thing, right? So I um, went and got a reasonable copy of it. And um, I was a guy who wanted to play sitting down at first, you know. So I bought it, and I was all set to plug it in and start playing like Adrian Smith. And uh, the first thing I noticed is when I sat down, there was nowhere for my, the way that body of the guitar was designed, there was nowhere for it to sit. And it sucked. It was terrible. I was like, gee, you know, so I found out very quickly, not only was it stupid to buy a guitar because somebody else played it, because it didn't make me play like they did, but um, the tone is in your fingers, as they say, right? And the airbrush does have a lot to do with that. So you're going to see people out there with these really crummy, you know, pink and purple $20 made in China airbrushes and stuff like that, who turn out a really pretty darn good model and you're going to see people with you know $400 harder and steam back airbrushes that turn out crap you know so um don't buy the airbrush thinking it's going to magically make you awesome it's it's uh how you use it and what you're using it for so I'm going to kind of put a couple pictures together here for you uh, you'll want to push pause because I don't know how long it takes you to write and read and everything But you know, there should be a couple of them push pause scroll through till you see the next one And when you see me doing a fade out of me washing the airbrushes, you'll know the air the, the video is over and I'm sorry But I'm not gonna have the whole thing on cleaning. It. It's a pretty Yeah, it's a pretty big. It's not a big deal. It's just something you sh that I should give you better better attention to than just a quick video of 30 seconds of me washing it, but anyway, that's just your cue to know the push click and move on to Will Pattison or Primed Model Works or someone else that you watch, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so don't go buy an airbrush based on what someone else does. Don't buy it based purely on budget. It, sometimes delayed gratification is just a better option than getting something right now. Um, I would recommend if you don't have the budget for something decent, just wait it out, you know, and uh, get something better. Uh, you know, you, you know, my recommendations are just my recommendations. I like what I like. There's people who like other things. Um, but the uh, the um, cleaning, and, oh, really quick before I talk about that, uh, another airbrush I mentioned that I tried and used to have that I didn't like, that it wasn't pictured because I don't have any more, was the Pash Talon. And you'll see people ask what airbrush is awesome and you know, what's a good airbrush and you're gonna see this and this and this and this and this. And then every once in a blue moon, you're gonna see Pash Talon plug in there. Uh, just me again, you know, just me. I hated it. Um, I found it way too heavy, way too cumbersome, way too big, um, and it got dirty too fast for me. So, um, you know, don't take my word for it, uh, but that's just my two cents. Um, and again, just coming back to the cheap thing, again, <sighs> this is tough with airbrushes. Generally speaking, the, the better the airbrush brand, the better it's going to be, but it's not purely the airbrush. I'll give you another example here. These uh, these pe these rubber tools, everybody loves these Dremels, and they're fine for a lot of things. But no matter what I tried, the corded, this one, the near one, I just never really got to like them. I get two stupid speed controls, too fast or too slow. I went on Amazon and I found me this cheap made in China little tool. I've got six different speeds on it. Um, I can change the collets to, to actually I can get, it comes with a collet that actually can use real drill bits on it. It was like 20 bucks. And it, it has done me more good than the, the expensive good Dremel did, you know? So this is, the moral of the story is this is not a hasty purchase, okay? Give this some thought. Um, you know, what kind of paints are you using? What scale are you building? That's what I'm gonna to try to help you out with this little picture here. Um, so, you know, don't rush into this, okay? Um, it's, a, it's an expensive purchase and it's gonna have probably the biggest impact on your work of anything. Because 
you know, first thing people notice is the paint job, right? Then they start delving into the construction flaws, how detailed the cockpit is, the engine. And, you know, you guys in tank world and car land, well, not car land, because you guys are all about paint. Um, but, you know, you people in uh, tank land and tracked vehicle land, you know, um, you have different issues um, and different things you worry about than, you know, the aircraft and the car people do. But, um, you know, the uh, it's a big deal and it's going to, that's the first thing people are going to notice is the paint job. And then they, they delve in from there. So uh, don't don't just, don't cheap out on it, but don't think you have to spend 800 bucks on it either, you know. Um, and, you know, kind of this little fun thing, you know, I got my new little stand. I'm excited about this thing. It's uh, one of these little stretchy things here. A um, lot better than my wobbly make-believe stand I had before. But, you know, I'm still shaking this thing and it's bumping into it. It's kind of fun. Um, but for those of you who might be, you know, delving into video land, I I, I kind of like this thing. It was 15 bucks. You can put it, you can put it in any position. Trick is to keep it tight like this. Because I found that the more farther out I stretch it and uh, the more wobbly it gets. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's other things out there. But, you know, being, you know, the rookiest of the rookies on video making. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just trying. I'm I'm learning here. But uh, that that might that's a not a bad stand if you guys ever go decide to make your own videos. It's a good thing to start out with. But um, anyway, I hope this helped you out a lot. If you uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell a thousand friends. Go make friends and tell them. Uh, <laughs> if you didn't like it, let me know. Uh, but you know, I got thick skin. I want to improve. I want to make it better for you. That's why I'm doing this. I mean. You know, if I had somebody to tell me all these things ahead of time, I'd, uh, it would have been good. But anyway, um, let's uh, let's get back to the uh, to the paint next. We're gonna explore the lacquer paints. I'm gonna be doing Mr. Color, and I'll tell you more about paint when we get to that thing. So, hey, thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate you coming, stopping by to visit, and uh, giving me your time. You'll never get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you have a good morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is out there. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Curse you, Badger. And everybody else who invented this damn suction fitter brush. I got it. This is how the pioneers built their models, though, so. Oh, well. And we'll have fun, fun, fun till our daddy takes the airbrush away.